All right, welcome back. We want to get back to the phones. We have Lucy on line two. Hello, Lucy. What is your question or your comment? Well, uh, hello, y'all. Hello. Hi, Lucy. Hey, uh, I just want to make a statement about the stigma of suicide. You know, some people, if you mention that you believe in the hemlock society, they just shut down. They they look at you differently from that point on. There really is a stigma. I thought we had gotten over this 35 years ago. So, you know, uh, I want to say something to the two Johns that called in. The last guy that called in that's having problems, he says he's called the 211 number mm -hmm. with, about his trailer. If he's got something like a fifth wheel, that might be very, very easy just to move out of that lot and maybe set it off to the side if, if the proprietor will let him do that or whatnot. Mm -hmm. And I suggest that he calls Operation Stand Down because oh, you're yeah, supposed to really yes. be about keeping you in a house if yeah, you're right. a veteran. And yes. if that's your case, John, uh, they're very easy to find on the Internet. And... Uh, that's I wanted to say that to him. And the first John, mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of people in his shoes, and I think uh, we don't give ourselves enough of a break. I have uh, chronic pain and PTSD, and a lot of people don't understand how their brain works. And I know what pain will do to your brain. It's like you said earlier, how high of a rate of suicide it is amongst people with pain. Right. I take no pain medications, nothing like that. I've been dealing with it for decades. So I have my way of dealing with it, and when it flares up, I have to keep to myself, and I have a very short fuse for, for petty stuff mm -hmm. because most of my brain is trying to control the pain, and I don't need anybody you know, getting in my space, so to speak. But if you're not careful, I haven't had this happen to me yet, you can get some pretty deep depression from that, right. uh, even if you're not on uh, mind-altering drugs like opioids and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But uh, this is what I would like to see. This conversation y'all are having is really good, but I think people need to be educated. You don't have to take a college course to understand how our brains work. You don't have to have a college course to understand that we have emotions, sad, mad, glad, and happy, and that's part of being a human being. I see people who use, you could tell they've used the same coping skills because their perception in life is maybe they were born with a lot and life didn't turn out, you know, the way that they wanted it to, and they get envious of people, and they try to use coping skills where they try to set their life off and wreck their life, and some people that doesn't work on, and they become suicidal. I mm -hmm. see that mainly with women, and now I'm starting to see that with guys, and that's concerning me that uh, these younger guys, like in their 50s and down, are feeling so insecure. So something is changing in society, mm -hmm. and I think it's our perception a lot of what we thought our life was going to be. I wish that the library could be used to have, uh, uh, we've got so many libraries in Nashville where we could have groups where somebody would come in and we would have discussion groups about our brain, our lives, what our expectations might be and stuff like that. Not a super professional level, but understand that and understand ourselves and what's in ourselves. You, know, you see what I'm saying? Am I yeah, yeah, talking no. crazier than I normally talk? <laughs> no, you make some good points. And I do appreciate your, your suggestion of Operation Stand Down for, uh, yes. for John. Um, Lucy, two important things I think she said and what I took from her call is the more we can get um, non-mental health professionals um, sitting at the table helping with this, just in, the, in some of the ways Lucy described, mm -hmm. is dead on. One way to do that is a course that can be taught to non-mental health professionals, really for the community, and it's called Mental Health First Aid. Hmm. And so, Lucy, you find a library close to you, and we'll we'll do a mental health first aid class. And it does it's a it's a six ish hour class, and it goes through what mental health disorders are, some of the brain stuff that Lucy's talking about. 
um, and it really is geared toward people that don't sit in the seat we sit in mental health and it just mm -hmm. says be on the lookout for this this is what depression looks like this is what anxiety disorder looks like this is what a bipolar disorder looks like and doesn't look like mm -hmm. and at the end of that it talks about how to get people help um, the second thing I thought uh, Lucy really hit the hit the nail on is coping skills and one of the we don't we have so little research in the in the area of suicide prevention uh, but one of the the pieces that we do have is the power of a, a safety plan mm. and so when individuals are at high risk for suicide we're very purposeful and it's a one pager and we fill out uh, and it kind of cascades down you know from what could you do yourself internally to try to feel better when you're feeling suicidal okay that's not working and mm -hmm. you go all the way down to looking at what means someone is thinking about and trying to remove those or secure those or get those out of the person's um, kind of general vicinity mm -hmm. much like I would take your car keys if you were drinking right right same thing not trying to take anybody's anything whether it's a weapon or pills or, or whatever but just removing them until you're feeling a little bit better and it really taps into what she was talking about that kind of coping skills and safety planning um, that you use so you don't need it anymore you've mentioned it throughout the the course of the evening and some of the things that Centerstone does but but tell us about some of the other services that might be able to help people in this situation help themselves or a loved one yeah we have you know the the wide menu of services from medication um, psychiatric services if someone needs medication we have psychiatrists and nurse practitioners that do that uh, therapy for someone that's that's experiencing a mental health disorder um, including suicidality or, or not uh, we have school-based we have residential we have psychosocial programs um, and then we have some arms like the center stone military services who can help veterans and I, and I really hope John calls in and, mm -hmm. and we'll hook him up with them uh, we have a research um, Institute um, you know we're trying to make sure the science of the brain gets um, quickly put into practice because I think now I think the number is 20 years from the time we know something works in behavioral health to it actually getting into practice there's such a lag and we don't see that in physical health mm. um, so so hopefully we've encompassed and we've worked really hard in the last couple of years to implement and really bake into our system and kind of weave it in everything we do screening and assessing for suicide because Oftentimes it's looking for a needle in a haystack, but we try to do as well as we can and then treat people differently while they're at what we feel like is the highest risk. Is funding a problem? I think to do good suicide prevention care and behavioral health, I think it's processes. So does it take a lot of money? No. Um, can you always do things with more money? We have grants. We have two grants that allow us to ID people that are highly suicidal and keep up with them while they're suicidal. And mm -hmm. we're very fortunate to have that. So that's wonderful. And can you do you know more with more? Absolutely. But to do good suicide prevention care, um, I think it's it's how you do it, and it's making sure you have a competent, confident, and caring workforce. Mm -hmm. And then I don't think you have to put a huge dollar sign on that, no. Gotcha. All right. We are going to take a quick break. I know Edna has been holding on for a while, so when we come back, we will try and get uh, to Edna. Um, hang in there, and we'll be right back.